Hello everyone, my name is Alvin and my metric number is BG19110117 from HG22. I am from Group B and today I will be presenting 1.1 demographic analysis specifically for 1.1.1 gender. The following is the demographic information of the respondents who answered the survey questionnaire distributed. There are two genders here which are male and female. Based on the data obtained, there are 29 males with a 25.4% and 85 females at 74.6%. As you can see on the graph, the highest percentage is female. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Lakshya Prabhiti Zainabhati. So today I want to present about the demographic respondent by age. So in this slide, we can see the table and the graph demographic by age. Okay, okay. Based on the graph, it shows that the respondent demographic by age 18 years old until 30 years old only. We can see at the graph the highest number of respondent is by age 18 until 31 years old, which is there is 94 people that have responded. It can be represented by 82.5 percent. Meanwhile, 28 until 13 years old is the lowest number of respondent, which is only one percent give response. It can be representing only 9 percent have responded. In my opinion, one of the reason why the age 28 until 13 years old is the most number of respondents because at the age maybe they are busy to work and they have no time to answer the Google form. At the graph, we also can see the second highest number of respondents, which is by age 22 until 24 years old. At this age, we can see 16 people have responded to the Google form, so it can be representing only 14 percent at this age. Next, at the age 25 until 27 years old, the number of respondent is only 3 people. It can be represent only 2.6 percent of the respondent. Okay, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Greetings, I'm Shirley Ling, which is and I'm going to present my part, which is the respondent demographic by resident in Malaysia. So, I'm going to start off with the highest percentage, which is 33.3% or with the total of 38 respondents from Sabah. And for the lowest, there are two places that do the same percentage, which is 0.9% from Kelantan and Federal Territory of Putrajaya respectively. From the result we got, there are few states that show the same percentage. For example, the second highest respondent by resident are from Sarawak, Johor, and Kuala Lumpur, which is 11.4% or 30 respondents for each state. Other than that, Penang and Perak also shows the same percentage with which is 4.4% only. As for Federal Territory of Labuan, Negeri Sembilan and Pahang, there is only two respondents for each state, which represent 1.8% only. Next, the percentage of respondents from Selangor is also not that bad, with the total of 10.6%, and as for Kedah, the percentage is only 2.6%. Although everyone from all around Malaysia are allowed to answer our Google form, but it did not reach any respondent from Paris and Terengganu, so making it zero for both of the states. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. My name is Natasha Bindi Berman. So today I'm gonna present my part, which is family income. So one of elements that we put in our demography research is family income. So we want to know um, our respondents uh, from uh, cat what category, from what category. This is the result and this is the, the data that we get. So we can see th there is three uh, category, which is B40, M40 and B20. Uh, for your information, uh, B40 is, uh, represents um, family income that have uh, 3000 and lower. And uh, M40 represent uh, families that have income between 3,000 and uh, 3,000 until 7,000 ringgit. And T20 is uh, families that have income uh, 7,000 and above. So um, at this graph, we can see that the highest uh, respondents or the highest number of respondents was come from category B40, 
G75 people representing 65.8%. Uh, second, uh, the graph also shows uh, the lowest um, number of demographic of family income was come from category T20, which is at people out of uh, 140 uh, respondents uh, or 7.0%. Lastly, in this graph, we also can see M40, category M40 is the second highest uh, category uh, with a total um, 31 respondents representing 27.2%. Uh, so, uh, based on, so we can conclude that um, the highest uh, respondents uh, in our uh, research was come from category B40 and the lowest come from category T28. That's all for me. Thank you. So, my name is Gautam Nayar Dakulari Nayar from the course HE22. My student ID is BG1911-0036. Today, I'll explain on the main analysis of pre prevention. First, we'll talk about the people who plan their purchase by writing a shopping list. The highest was 44 respondents, which is equivalent to 38.6 percentage of people who sometimes plan their purchase by writing a shopping list. While the lowest was 5 respondents, which is equivalent to 4.4 percentage of people who never plans their purchase by writing a shopping list. 21.1 percentage of respondents often plan their purchase by writing a shopping list followed by 20.2 and 15.8 respondents who rarely and always plan their purchase. The mean achieved is 3.24, half from 4, which shows that the most of the respondents sometimes plan their purchase by writing a shopping list. Next, we'll talk on people who are aware of the difference between use by and best before dates. The highest was 51 respondent, which is 44.7 percentage, who always knew the difference between use by and best before dates. The lowest was two respondents equivalent to 1.8 percentage, who never knew the difference between use by and best before dates. 25.4 percentage of respondents are often aware of the difference, followed by 20.2 percentage and 7.9 percentage of respondents who sometimes and rarely are aware of the difference between use by and best before dates. The mean achieved is 4.04, which shows that most of the respondents are always aware of the difference between use by and the best before dates. Lastly, on prevention will be people who use leftover in the following days. Highest number of respondents was was 51, which is 44.7% of people who sometimes use leftover in the following days. The lowest number was for never with 6 respondents, which is equivalent to 5.3% of respondents who uses leftover in the following days. 21.9% of respondents rarely uses leftover, followed by 12.3% of respondents who always uses leftover in the following days. And lastly, 5.8% of respondents who often uses leftover in the following days. The mean achieved is 3.08, which shows that the respondents mostly uses, mostly sometimes uses leftovers in the following days. Hello and good day, doctor and my teammates. My name is Tan Yuling. My metrics number is VG1910264. So uh, we are currently doing the assignment regarding the research, me research method. In the past one month, we collected the data from our respondents via the online survey basis due to the outbreak of pandemic so we can't do it in physically so we have to do it online so i would like to present about the food waste there are six types of food waste we are doing the research but i would like to present three of them which are the drinks and food waste of rice and meats so i'll start off with drinks so i will emphasize on the majority and minority of respondents so for this there are 50, it shows there are 52 respondents, which are the 45.6% of respondents never waste the drinks, which is the good sign, right? From this, we can know that most of our respondents appreciate the food, which is good, okay? So afterwards, only one respondent always waste the drinks, okay? Next, I want to go to rice. So for the rice, there are 51 respondents, which is 44.7% of the respondents rarely waste the rice. In fact, it is quite good. Okay, so only two respondents, which is 1.48%, always waste the food. 
oh, oh wait, wait, it's the rice. Okay, my bad, sorry. So, I want to the next, which is the meat. Okay, for the meat, there are 47 respondents, which is about 41.2% of them never waste the meat, which is a very good sign. Okay, from my opinion, why they always didn't waste the meat? I think it is most probably because the meat, the price of the meat is quite expensive, right? So they are, the more expensive it is, the more appreciated that will be. So I think this is the behavior of a consumer. So afterwards, then, then there are no res, there's no respondents always raise the meat, which is a very good sign. So I think that's all from me. Thank you. Greetings to Dr. Isa and my dear fellow groupmates. My name is Yashiri Rajendran and my matrix number will be BG19110308. Now, I would like to present another three types of food waste based on the survey that we have done. Now, let's move to the fourth food waste, which will be fruits and vegetables. As we can see from the data, about 40.4% of our respondents says that they never waste their fruits and vegetables, whereas only 2.6% of our respondents say that they always waste their fruits and vegetables. The next food waste will be fish. About 42.1% of our respondents say that they never waste their fish during their meal, whereas none of our respondents say that they always never waste their fish during their meal. The last food waste will be egg. It shows that majority of our respondents, which is 58.8% of our respondents, never waste their egg during their meal. And about 0% of our respondents says that they never waste their egg during their meal. Based on this survey on the food waste, we can say that most of our respondents never waste their food waste during their meal. That's all from me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chu Wei Fu. Today I want to talk about the regularity. So let's see the first one, the regularity on breakfast. The pie chart show the regularity on breakfast. A majority of 31.6%, which is 36 respondents, sometimes have breakfast. 0.9%, which is one respondent, never have breakfast. The mean achieve is 3.44, half from 4, which show that the respondents sometimes have breakfast. The next is the regularity on lunch. The pie chart show the regularity on lunch. A majority of 43%, which is 49 respondents, always have lunch. No respondents, which is 0%, never have lunch. The main achieve is 4.1, half from 5, which show that the respondents always have lunch. The third one is the regularity on dinner. The pie chart show the regularity on dinner. A majority of 45.6%, which is for 52 respondents, always have dinner. No respondent, which is 0%, never have dinner. The main achieve is 4.18, half from 5, which show that the respondent always have dinner. So now let's move on to the regularity eat fruits and vegetables. The pie chart show the regularity eat fruits and vegetables. The majority of 34.2%, which is 39 respondents, often eat fruits and vegetables. No respondent, which is 0%, never eat fruit and vegetables. The mean achieve is 3.52, half from 4, which show that the respondent often eats fruits and vegetables. The last one is the regularity eat the junk food. The pie chart show the regularity eat junk food. A majority of 52.6%, which is 60 respondent, sometimes eat junk food. 5.3%, which is 6 respondents, always eat junk food. The mean achieve is 2.82, half from 3, which show the respondents sometimes eat junk food. The, that's all from me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Andrea Vesa. I'm from Hashi82. For this one, I'd like to present about data analysis for healthy food. From the research we have done, this is this one of the sections that we used to ask the respondent, and they have two, I mean, three parts of it. The first one is the regularity on eating fruit and vegetable. The second one is the analysis of eating junk food, and the third one is the analysis of drink, land, water, then soft drink. So the first one is the regularity on eating fruit and vegetable. So as we all can see that the mean analysis of eating fruit and vegetable is 3.52. It is half from 4, which shows that the respondent will, will choose to eat fruit and vegetable. 
and you can see that the majority of respondents, it is 34.2%, who choose to eat fruit and vegetable often rather than never eat fruit and vegetable. So it is followed by 16.7% and 15.8% respondents who always and rarely eat fruit and vegetable. So the other is like 33.3% may eat sometime fruit and vegetable. So it is possible to see the respondent not to eat fruit and vegetable because it is one of excellent sources of dietary fiber and which can help to maintain a healthy gut and prevent constipation and other digestion problems. Okay, well, the second one is the analysis of not eating junk food. Based on the data analysis we have, a majority of respondents, which is 52.6%, yes, sometimes or sometimes eat junk food. And there are 5.3% of the respondents will always eat junk food, and there are two, and the other is 24.6% are rarely eat junk food. But the other, on the other hand, there are 10.5% who often eat junk food. So we can see that there are the mean the mean analysis of this data is 2.82 which is half from 4 which show that there are there are not uh, a high number of respondent all to eat junk food so for the last part of this section is about um, the preferred to drink plain water than soft drink based on the analysis, the analysis of data that we have is there are both have almost have a similar result but there are 33.3 percent of respondents who choose to drink plain water only than soft drink. While there are 25.1 respondents who consume only soft drink instead of plain water. So there are 20.2 percent of respondents are often drink plain water, and the other is 11 percent rarely choose to drink plain water. And and it, it is obvious that one only one person will never drink plain water. So it's kind of sad to know that because there's a lot of benefit of to drink plain water. So the mean analysis is 3.75 of respondent who are almost a bit, uh, who are almost a bit of um, the statement which is to drink more plain water than soft drink because there is a lot of benefit of drinking plain water because it has helped us to improve our physical performance, improving our energy levels, and relieving common illnesses that are like constipation and headache and more. So drinking enough water is essential for our overall physical, emotional, and psychological well-being. So that's all for me. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Kelly Shreddy Paramesoran, PG 19110207 from PG19. So today I'm going to present my part which is the main analysis of it home. So under my part, there have three questions that have been asked to our respondent respectively. So let's see the first question, which is I regularly consume my daily meals at home. So here are the table and the chart. Okay. So based on the chart above, majority of 41.2% of respondents often consume their daily meals at home. Besides, only 0.9% of the respondents never consume their daily meals at home. Next, 3.5% of respondents are rarely, followed by 20.2% as well as 34.2% respondents who sometimes and always consume their daily meals at home. So the mean achieved is 4.04, which shows that the respondents often consume their daily meals at home. Next, next question is the food from home is best. So here are the table and the chart. Okay. Based on the data analysis given, a majority of 57% of respondents always think that the food from home is the best. Next, 22.8% of respondents are oftenly thinks that the food is uh, the food is best. Followed by 17.5% and 2.6% respondents who sometimes and rarely thinks that the food from home is the best. The mean achieved is 4.34, which is half from 5, which shows that the respondent always says that the food from home is the best. So the last question is, I would rather eat home than eat out. So here are the table and the chart. Based on the data analysis, Given, a majority of 34.2% of respondents often eat at home than eat out. 32.5% of respondents are always, followed by 28.9% as well as 4.4% respondents who, who sometimes and rarely eat at home than eat out. The mean achieved is 3.95, which is near to 4, which shows that the respondents often eat at home rather than eat out. That's all from me. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Alvin and I am from Group B. And my metric number is BG19110117. And today I will be presenting 2.0 findings 
based on our group assignment entitled Youth Healthy Lifestyle and Food Waste Behavior in Malaysia. So basically, our feedback form consists of five major sections, which are prevention, food waste regularity, healthy food, and eat home. This study was conducted to identify regarding the respondents' actions preventing food waste, the probability of food being wasted on each meal, meals regularity, consumption of healthy food, and habit of eating at home. Overall, in the prevention section, most respondents often take action preventing food waste where they a majority often aware of the differences between used by best before dates with the highest mean in this section of 4.04. In the food waste section, the probability of food being wasted on each meal is majority rice with a mean of 2.11. In the regularity section, the majority of respondents have their dinner regularly with a mean of 4.18. In the healthy food section, respondents prefer to drink plain water rather than soft drink with a mean of 3.75. And lastly, in the eat home section, respondents have agreed or always believe that the food from home is the best. It came with the highest mean of 4.34. These findings overall do show that youths are prioritizing their health and are making sure that their food waste behavior is in control. Many respondents are aware of the importance of a healthy lifestyle and the importance of controlling their food waste behavior. Rather than eating out, most respondents are fond of eating at home because they believe that food at home is the best. To conclude, the finding shows that youth healthy lifestyle and food waste behavior in Malaysia are being taken seriously and is still controllable. Maintaining and prioritizing one's health and food waste would surely lead to a healthier, fitter, and frugal environment. And that is all from Group B. Thank you and have a great day and a happy new year. Bye!